My name is Luis Neves, and my favorite bird is all of them. So if you want to call me a bird whisperer, I'll take it anytime. My name is Clarence. Suzy! Ho! Suzy is one of the birds. Uh, she's a 21-year-old bald eagle that I've worked with for some time already. Come, let me see your leg. Hello, my name is Xiao. I'm one of the animal care members here at Mandai. My name is Peter Teo. In the park, they actually call me Tong. Jump, 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 jump. They are my three little pigs. And I believe they are a bit chubby. <laughs> so the word that comes to mind when I first saw the Soros crane was all. She is a very pleasant bird to work with. But over the years, I've also discovered that she has started to behave very grouchy. Hey! First impression, wow, they are huge. Amazingly, they are not as heavy as most people think. So the macaws can break the nuts very easily because actually they have very strong beaks and you wouldn't want to put your fingers in there. So this black crown crane has a very interesting personality. Uh, he's very protective of his uh, partner and he actually prefers the male keepers. So he's very aggressive to the female keepers. We are moving approximately 3,500 birds of around 400 species. The preparation for the actual move started more than a year ago, and it started initially as a tabletop exercise, basically a series of workshops, just for us to identify every possible areas of risk, how to mitigate that risk, what were the actual needs from an operational logistical point of view, from transportation to how many boxes, how many pairs of boots, whether there's switches in the right places, all those things. We had dry runs with the company over the trucks to actually select the best way and, and actually figure out was there a, a better timing to bring the, the birds in because we only bring them a certain period of time in the morning. So when we move birds, we have a few methods that we can choose from. Uh, our preferred method is to have the animals conditioned to come to retrieval areas. However, certain species are a bit more complex. So cranes, storks, we usually, it's much safer for them to actually quickly restrain them and put them safely in the transport boxes. Okay, so this is a crate for a crane-sized animal. So these are some of the special features for it. We have two padlocks. Now these crates all across have all these little holes. Now these are air circulation holes for the animal inside. Likewise, it's also for the keepers. We can torch light and see the animal from outside. Okay, like come, I'll show you inside. It's very spacious, you know, I can go in. So these are all the pad here for the animal. In the truck, you know, it's very bumpy. This can cushion the animal should they hit the side of the crate. A crown crane actually is a terrestrial animal. It doesn't perch, so it doesn't have to have perch. But we do lay, lay mats on the ground so the animal can grip onto the mat and you won't slip and fall. And then certain species like flamingos, penguins, they are actually more comfortable if we gently, uh, if you want, shepherd them as a group into their uh, transport area and then they come as a whole group which makes them much more relaxed and much less stressful. Every time we start with a new habitat, we always bring first the birds that we know are in a way hardier and more likely to be able to really find their sweet spot faster and in the way that also helps us test the aviary to make sure that everything is safe. Today we are getting ready for the move, finally, and uh, we're all excited to uh, bring our birds over to their new homes. So uh, what's going to happen is uh, we've actually conditioned uh, a few of our birds already to enter pet carriers uh, voluntarily, after which uh, we will load them up onto the trucks to transport them over to the bird paradise. I actually started conditioning the birds into the pet carriers since last year, September. So with positive reinforcement training, we, we will start off with introducing the bird to the pet carrier that they are going to enter, to sit them down uh, in front of the pet carrier and let them know that it's something that will not harm them. 
and then eventually putting some food inside for them to receive the reward. Eventually, the bird will accept to want to go in there on its own as opposed to being restrained to be put inside. Imagine if you have never been next to a crate, for example, uh, or if you have never been inside a box. So that's why we made it a point that most of the animals are already familiar with what a crate is, so it's nothing foreign to them. And when the move comes and you just close the door, it's just, oh, nothing special because it happened before. The birds that are moving today are the black crown crane and the saurus crane. So first thing in the morning, we will assemble all the staff members. We wanted every staff to know what was their roles and uh, preparation work. It's a potentially dangerous animal, so we always go in body system. So restraining crane is kind of tricky because crane's defensive mechanism involves them pecking and kicking. When we actually restrain a crane, uh, we have to make sure we handle both their, their bill, their head and their feet. Just yeah. you ready? Normally the animals, when they see the vets, they, they, they will think that you know, oh, they're about, they're about to do a medical check. So the animals don't like it. They try their best to run away from us. So the net is actually meant to control the animal's movement. So we do not want the animal to trash. And you know hurt itself, uh, like, uh, maybe there's a sharp twig or branch or like rocks. Like, it is also to protect the keepers as well. Because the animal, the natural instinct is to trash and fight back. Following that, we will actually hold the animal and walk the animal to the box. So we try to minimize snacks as much as possible. If you actually see the shoe bill, the upper bill membrane is actually a hook. So that's where you get injured from. So we secure the head and we will tuck in the leg and we'll just hold them like a big baby. <laughs> Our net has punchy edge, so we make sure that we don't injure them when we actually net them. So he gave me a slight pinch, but I still managed to hold him and secure his bill. They have a quick red check on their condition. We trim the feather just to keep them on the ground, to let them explore and have some time to adjust. It's not something that is a concern of because they always grow back their feather in three months time. We always try to avoid restraining the bird. I have no choice but I have to be the handler of the shoe bill. Even though it might break his trust, it just has to be done. It's just for the safety of the bird. Early on, uh, she was trying to come out of the uh, carrier that she was in. So before we left, I tapped on the cage and told her that we are going to her new home. Everything should be fine. There was a moment when, uh, when the crate was in the lorry and it's moving. Um, yeah, it's, it's like a goodbye, but I will see you again. <laughs> when we cover the, the boxes, it actually gives them less visual stimuli and makes them a bit more relaxed. We just released her and we are going to monitor her together with the rest of the birds as well. She is now also checking out her new home, trying to figure out where this is. 
you know, which is very normal and expected as well. It's very hard to tell if a bird is happy or not. But I think she is not angry, I know for sure. So I'm thinking she's happy. For the shoe bills, we want them closer to water. So what we'll do is that we'll probably release them in a flat area. So they, I mean, it's easier for them to walk around and all that. And once they come over, uh, we'll probably try to condition them uh, with food and slowly move them closer to the water. Whenever we move a bonded pair of cranes or hornbills, anything like this, where the bond between the birds is very strong, we always make it a point that we release them side by side and if not at the same time, very shortly after one after the other to make sure that the first thing that they see is the other bird, which is what they're used to and it is in a way it's like a safety blanket for them. Today we released 12 scarlet macaws and 60 sun parakeets to Crimson Wetlands. They are the second batch of birds that come to the habitat and these new tenants will actually learn for the first ones that came, the pioneers, to actually know how to maneuver around the place already and they will learn from them where to get food, where to go for shelter, where it's the best place to roost at night. Hey boy! Remember me? Yes, you remember me because you're running away. He does remember that I'm the one who to handle him during the, the period and he's avoiding me. It's a bit I'm sad, but but at least he's doing very well here. He's adapting well. Oh, you should have come here earlier. It's so beautiful here. So I can't wait to move to Bird Paradise because I can't wait to see the look of wow of the guests when they go in through the door for the very first time. Because uh, housing for our birds is going to be much bigger. Because I believe this is going to be the best place in the world caring for birds. Because I will have Wings of Asia by myself, the whole Avery the team of Bali. <laughs> holiday! <laughs> Every day come work is holiday. <laughs> <laughs>